forth with a squeak of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come oh, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'll Silver. Cowboy Tom is a boy of six. He knows all kinds of cowboy tricks. He can rope the steer because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got go power. There he goes. He's stealing his Cheerios. 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 Yes, it's a fact. Cheerios does give you real go power. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones and muscles. And Cheerios is so much fun to eat with its distinctive O shape and its wonderful toasted oat flavor. So tomorrow morning and every morning, start the day right with a Cheerios breakfast. Then you'll hear people say, He's feeling his Cheerios. Miranda Perkins was a rough, self sufficient pioneer woman who had taken over the Bar O Ranch when her husband died and made it prosper to such an extent that it was one of the largest ranches in the Southwest Territory. One morning, there was an important discussion between Miranda and three men from the nearby town of Viewpoint as they sat on the porch of the ranch house. Miranda, now that you've met Mr. Harvey here, I want to tell you why we brought him out to see you. Well, I'm listening. Why did you? Mr. Harvey represents the railroad. Reckon if that's what he wants to do, that's up to him. As for me, the farther I stay away from such newfangled contraptions, the better. If I may say so, Mrs. Perkins, the railroad is going to mean great progress for the West. For instance... And never mind the for instances, Mr. Harvey. Just get to the point. Why did you come out here to see me? Well, we blade rails to within four miles of Utah. If we bring the railroad into that town, we want to be assured of the right of way through to Rock Hill, south of here. If we can't get the right of way we want, we'll swing west from our present position to Sandy Gulch instead of coming into viewpoint. Then follow the valley ten miles west of here, bypassing both viewpoint and Rock Hill. Just what's all that got to do with me? If they want to run the rails across your property, they'll pay a good price, Mrs. Perkins. So that's it. Well, Mr. Harvey, you and Hank Barton and Cy Digby might as well test yourselves back to town. I'm not going to have those rattling, screaming steam vehicles running across my property and scaring the daylights out of my cattle. I own lush grazing land, and I'm going to keep it that way. Now, hold on, Miranda. You don't realize what it means to us businessmen in town to have the railroad come through viewpoints? The answer is no, Hank Barton. You can take Mr. Harvey back to town right now. What's more, it'll do you no good to be coming here again trying to change my mind. Good day to all of you. Late that afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Toto, rode a trail that bypassed viewpoint. They were some distance south of the Perkins Ranch when they noticed a horseman approaching at a fast gallop. Someone riding his way, Toto. Seems to be in a hurry. Ah. 
Maybe it's better we turn into gully. Let him go past, Kimasabi. Yes, he might mistake us for outlaws. Look, Kimasabi, horse fall, pro rider. No, no, no. Out. man and Indian leaned over the fallen man. Oh. He groaned. Then struggled to sit up. A masked outlaw and an Indian. I, oh, my ankle. We're not outlaws. We came to help you. That ankle's badly sprained. We'll bandage it for you. With pain racking his face, the man lay back while the Lone Ranger bound his sprained ankle. His eyes followed every move the Lone Ranger and Toto made. Then he spoke. I reckon I was hasty in saying you were outlaws. <laughs> I have to get my horse. Go on right away. If you're right at all, you'll have to take it easy for a while. No, I I have to get to viewpoint. Oh, take it oh. easy, fellow. I, I can't make it. Maybe you and the Indian will warn them. Warn them? Yes. The Apaches on the warpath, 20 miles south of here. They're moving northward? Yes, burning ranches, burning settlements. If they reach viewpoint, there'll be a massacre. Hello, we'll have to give warning. His horse is out of sight and we haven't time to find it. Not right. You ride double with me on silver. We make the best time possible. All right, let's go. Darkness has fallen and Miranda Perkins sat at the head of a long table eating supper with her ranch hands. By thunder, if those folks in town think I'm going to give up part of my best grazing land to the railroad just because they want it to come to viewpoint, they're local. But gosh, man, we have plenty of range land the cattle can use. And having the railroad come into viewpoint would be good for the borrow spread. You could ship cattle without driving them so far. <laughs> when you get too lazy to ride herd in a cattle drive, you won't be any use around here. Well, I was only thinking of your good ma'am, that's all. Everybody thinks a railroad would be mighty fine. Oh, so, the rest of you agree with Tex, huh? Well, the railroad's not going to run across my property, and that's that. But... I'll see you. Don't go. Sorry we have to hold guns on you like this, but we can't waste time. What's the meaning of this? We came here to warn you. The Apaches are on the warpath 20 miles south of here and moving this way. Their progress may be slow, but they'll get here sooner or later and burn you out. I want to see a trick, ma'am. They most likely came to hold us up. I told you why we came. I'll think what you please. You've had your warning. Come on, Toto. Uh-huh. I thunder out. Don't they didn't do any harm, and they may have told the truth. Follow them and see where they go. That night, the people of Viewpoint gathered in the meeting house to discuss Miranda's refusal to allow the railroad to go through the valley. Mrs. Perkins owns that property and has the right to deny the railroad the use of it. She may be persuaded to change her mind. I agreed to wait a few days before sending in my report. Oh, Miranda Perkins will never be persuaded, Mr. Hobby. Oh. She's the stubbornest female in the Southwest. And she figures a railroad will never take the place of stagecoaches and freight wagons. Yeah, the way I see sure. it, she hasn't the right to refuse the right away. When it affects all the rest of us so much. That's all right, right. regardless sure. of how you feel about it, Mr. Digby. We'll not use that land unless it's signed over to us by Mrs. Perkins of her own free will. Well, I... If she doesn't do so by the end of this week, we'll lay tracks westward to Sandy Gulf. Oh, oh, I, 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 I still think we ought to... Hey, look, coming in the door. Last yeah. man is injured. Yeah. yeah. They're helping an injured hombre. Cover the men. Wait, listen to what we have to say. All right, preach all of it. This is some trick to have a gang hold us up. This is no trick. This man came from the south. He was injured on the trail. We brought him here. He has something very important to say. That's right, I have. The Apaches are on the warpath, 20 miles south of here. They're slowly moving this way, burning and killing. I was on my way here to warn you when I was thrown, and these men helped me. What? That mask. Mister, we want to know. Here, read this. Hey, what? Let it sign by the governor. Shame this man. This man is a lone ranger. 
Well, we've all heard of him and how he helped the law. Thanks. I suggest you send your women and children north in wagons as soon as possible. Those Apaches may reach here by dawn. Maybe if we get all the help we can from nearby ranches... We can put up a fight against them, eh? There are about 300 of them. Oh, that's more we could handle. Buy something yeah, around the Perkins to lose everything at the Barrow spread? Well, uh, serve a right well, tool. We warned the Barrow about the Apaches. Miranda's too stubborn to leave her place. Why do you say it will serve her right? Quickly, Hank told about the railroad wanting the right through the Barrow Ranch. When he finished, the Lone Ranger spoke. You say the tracks come to within four miles of here? That's right. The railroad runs through Fort Davis, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And that's the answer. Is there an engine where the tracks end? A work train is on a siding there now. Toto, you're right with Mr. Harvey. It's four miles to the railroad. Uh -huh. Mr. Harvey has the authority to order the train crew to move the work train to Fort Davis. Yes, I can order that. Good. I'll write a note to the commandant at the fort. They load their troops and horses onto the train. They should get back here before dawn. It's only a 20-mile run to the fort. When yes, you but you made a good idea, but... If the Apaches reach here before then... You'll get all the men possible and go to the plains south of the Barrow Ranch. You may be able to hold back the savages until the soldiers arrive. Yes. If not, the viewpoint will be burned and many people massacred. The old ranger wrote a note to the Fort Commandant. Then Tonto left with Mr. Harvey. Men were hurriedly sent to the various ranches in the territory, and within a couple of hours, more than a hundred men gathered in town awaiting orders, and wagons loaded with women and children moved northward from the town. Continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Now, free stamp offer from Cheerio, the ready to eat oat cereal. Free for one special Cheerio's box top, a 64 page guide packed with information on stamp collecting, plus 10 genuine foreign stamps to start your collection. Begin the world's most thrilling hobby collecting stamps from strange, exciting, faraway lands all over the globe. You'll want this handy 1955 stamp guide for your very own. It contains many pages in full color, gives you tips on how to collect stamps, how to start your own stamp club, and even includes a whole illustrated section on U.S. stamps. Get your 64-page guide plus 10 stamps free for only one special Cheerios box top. And on the back of the same Cheerios package, find still another offer. 300 foreign stamps plus stamp album for only 25 cents in box top. All stamps supplied by world's largest stamp firm, H.E. Harrison Company of Boston. Act now. Look for the Cheerios package with the free stamp offer on front. Now to continue. Text the Barrow Ranch foreman who had followed the Lone Ranger and Toto to town. Hurriedly returned to the ranch house to make his report. Oh, 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 boy, oh. carried a letter from the governor saying he's a lawman. Mm -hmm. What he said about the Apaches is true, ma'am. Everybody's gathering in town. Mm -hmm. So it's true, huh? Take, tell all the hands to round up the cattle and start a drive northward. Tell them to keep on going. Sorry, ma'am. We'll round them up and take them as far as the North Valley. But then the men will have to do their share to help stop those redskins. You mean to say you're not going to obey my orders? If those Apaches get through, you won't have any ranch left. What's more, people's lives are at stake. Well, what about me? What about my holding? Well, that's just it, ma'am. The men in town, on suggestion by the masked man, figure on facing the Apaches south of here so as to hold them back. <laughs> They're doing that for their own good, not mine. I'm telling you, Tex, I want those cattle driven north. Sorry, ma'am. We do it the way I said. I'll have to go talk to the men now. You better get your horse and head for town. <laughs> watched as the ranch hands rode away with Tex. She was determined not to leave her place and seemed not to realize the danger. Mm -hmm. 
later, the Lone Ranger, who had gone scouting to the south, rode by and saw the ranch house lighted. He stopped. Oh, no, oh easy, Teddy, big fella. Again, Tex told me about you. Mrs. Perkins, it's dangerous for you to stay here. Why not go into town until the danger's over? Mister, nobody tells Miranda Perkins what to do. Not even a bunch of savages can run me out of my own home. Then I can't persuade you to leave. No, so it's no use wasting words. You're a very stubborn woman, Mrs. Perkins. What? Too stubborn for your own good. <laughs> You've been unreasonable about the railroad right of way. And now you're unreasonable where your own life is concerned. What? I hope we'll be able to hold back those Indians, but if we can't, you'll die along with many others. Think it over and take my advice. Get out while you can. Good night. The Lone Ranger hurriedly left the bar old ranch house and mounted his great horse, Silver. You steady, big fella. Come Silver! in viewpoint and pulled to a stop in front of the hotel where the men had gathered. Hold it, hold it. Hey, see it. You're all ready to ride to the plains oh, down to the bar old. Hey, if you stay here with Side Dick, me, and show the troopers the way to the South Plains, I'll be willing to lead the men out there to wait for the Apache. Right. All right, all right, see you later, Hank. Let's go, men. Come on, till later. Yeah. 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 the Lone Ranger placed 25 picked men on a low tree-covered bluff where they'd be hidden from sight, yet able to overlook the plains along which the Apaches would pass. Then the masked man took his place at the head of the remaining horsemen and waited for the Indians to appear. At dawn, a sound reached them that sent chilling shivers up their spines. They're coming over the rise. Ready, men? They outnumbered the ranchers. They fought frenziedly. Charge, men. Let's get in there fighting. We must hold them back. The fight developed into a hand-to-hand combat on horseback. And soon it looked as if the settlers' efforts were in vain. Many of them felt they could leave and save their lives. But the masked man's shouts of encouragement kept them fighting. Keep fighting. Don't let them pass. Come on, Silver. When matters really look hopeless. The troopers are coming up behind you. The mounted troopers moved up rapidly and joined the settlers in the battle. Though the Apaches were only slightly outnumbered, they were poorly armed, and the experienced soldiers made every shot count. The rays of the early sun glistened on the rifle barrels and swords of the troopers as they engaged in a furious battle against the savages. In the midst of the fray could be seen the mighty horse Silver, whose master seemed to have no fear of the frenzied and bloodthirsty redskins. His urgent cry was heard above the noise of battle. Come on, Silver! At her ranch house, Miranda Perkins heard the shooting. She left the ranch house and mounted her horse, which was already saddled at the corral. Hey, Thunder, I'm going to see what's going on. Get up there! Oh, oh now, oh now. A short time later, from a nearby hill, Miranda watched the battle. She began to realize what it meant. The ranchers and townsmen were fighting to protect her ranch, as well as to protect the town of Viewpoint. She saw the big white stallion bearing the masked man moving about in the thick of the fray and heard the strong voice of the Lone Ranger as he shouted encouragement to the others. The battle raged for some time. Then those Apaches who were still able to ride turned and raced back across the prairie, followed by some of the troopers. On the 
hilltop, Miranda was still in the saddle. When the Lone Ranger, Toto, Hank, Fry, and Mr. Harvey approached. Oh, 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 oh. It was dangerous for you to come out here, Mrs. Perkins. <laughs> I wouldn't have missed seeing that fight for anything, mister. I reckon I have to thank you all for saving my holding. We fought to save the town with women and children, Mrs. Perkins. This was the best place to meet the Apaches. In other words, you're saying you all wouldn't have come out just to save my place, huh? If you were the only one who would suffer, yes. But in the West, when calamity threatens, everyone must turn in and help. In this case, many people would have suffered greatly, and many others would have died. Hey, tell me, how come the troopers? Where did they come from, and how did they get here in time? I'll answer that, Mrs. Perkins. It was a masked man who thought of the idea of bringing the troopers here by railroad. By railroad? That's right. We used the work train that was on the siding north of town. Fortunately, the troopers arrived in time. They did only because of the railroad, Mr. Harvey. We owe everything to that railroad. If it hadn't been for that... Hmm. Mm, uh, I reckon I was too thick-headed to realize how important the railroad is. If you just weren't so doggone stubborn, Miranda, we'd have the tracks come right to viewpoint. Side, Bigby, don't you dare say I'm stubborn. Nobody can tell me that. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> From what I heard, the mask man told you that right to your face earlier today. <laughs> uh, that's right, he did. But uh, a woman has a right to change her mind. Hey, what? Uh, do you mean you'll sell us the rights to cross your land? Yes, Mr. Harvey. Draw up the papers and we'll get the deal over with what, today. What jumping catfish? I can't believe it. Uh, Miranda, I reckon you're all right after all. Thanks. For nothing, Hank Barton. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's under control here. Well, adios, everybody. Oh, Goodbye. 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 Let's go, Toto. Come. Bye. Thunder, there's a real man. I watched him fight the Indian. Mr. Harvey, tell me, who is that handsome hombre wearing the mask who makes these so-called men look like something the cat drags? Well, who is it? Do you know him? All I know, Mrs. Perkins, is that he's a mighty fine fellow who seems to know all the answers. He's known as the Lone Ranger. We'll return in just a moment for a word about our next exciting Lone Ranger adventure... Race to the Wire. You know, an exciting way to learn about foreign countries is to study their coins. And Wheaties' special foreign coin offer is really terrific. Right now, Wheaties is offering you two different sets of genuine foreign coins. There's the international set with 15 coins from countries like Germany, Iceland, and South Africa. And the mystery set with 15 coins from faraway lands like Angola, Turkey, New Zealand. Remember, these coins are real money you could spend right now in these countries. And each coin set comes in a special folder. A map inside shows you where the coins are used and gives information about the country. Each coin has been cleaned and polished. Sounds like these genuine coins would cost a lot, doesn't it? But you can get each set for only 25 cents and one Wheaties box top. Look for directions on the back of Wheaties Special Foreign Coin Packages at your grocer's now. Hurry, start your foreign coin collection today. While waiting for the telegraph with the biggest news of the year, the Lone Ranger was stopped by the law. You're going to take off that mask and go to jail. You're wrong, Marshal. I'm going to the nearest telegraph office. You'll have to shoot me first. What did the Lone Ranger do? Be sure to listen to this unusual and exciting adventure. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, is created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Charles D. Livingston, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Ford.